Hey everyone, it's Alex. I'm sitting here with Delilah Dawson, the author of Perfect Weapon, uh, the short story that came out just before Force Awakens. Um, so Delilah, I feel like I kind of owe you because my number one video with like one and a half million views uh, is all about Perfect Weapon. So. I, I wanted to say thank you, first of all. I was very excited that you were coming to Dragon Con. Well, thank you, and, and thank you for doing that one, because I think it got more people to read the book. So it's very, um, we're symbiotes, we're parasites, yeah. and we're both, we're both working it. Well, good, yeah, the, that story was excellent. But, um, so what, what is it like to work with the story group? Like, did they approach you to write the story about the character, or did you approach them? Did you want to write for Bazine? Oh, um, Star Wars, you, you don't go to them, they come to you, pretty much. Um, I still, like, I have the email that my agent sent that says, like, I'm about to blow your mind. And every time I'm on the road I was on when I got the email, I get a little lift of hope, like, maybe a miracle will happen and I'll win the lottery on this road. Um, but no, they approached me before the movie, and uh, there were some, I think the Annie Leibovitch sh shoot had just come out, so we had, like, a couple of real teasers, but no one knew what anything was. And so all I really had was um, a picture and a couple of hints. And when I was like, well, you know, what, what's my background information about? Because, you know, it's like 30 years that no one has any idea what's happened. And they were like, you know, just Google TFA spoilers. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to spoil it. And they were like, you won't. But that's all, you know, that's, I, I watched, like, all of um, Rebels and Mr. Clone Wars. And I was like, okay, I can figure this out. But there's, it was this huge swath of, like, nothing had happened. So it was really exciting. So was most of the story just left up to you? You you got to tell like what was going on in Bazine's life. Um, I'm I'm sure they gave you some little things like include this and that, but it it sounds like you got to kind of make it all up. Well, it's I mean it's um, we're not allowed to talk too much about the story group. They're lovely people. Um, for me, I think because I was writing, um, it was one of the first stories in the new canon, um, and I wasn't allowed to use any existing characters um, and not a lot of the, the familiar worlds. So I got to come up with a lot of stuff. So there was a lot of freedom and a lot of, oh my God, you're trusting me to come up with a planet. <laughs> um, so I feel very fortunate in that I, I got a lot more leeway than some people do. You know, it's not like when you're, when you're writing Luke and you have these strict parameters and, you, you, and there's things he would say or wouldn't say or would know or wouldn't know. With Bayesian, it was like, go for it. And it was a very nice organic process. I enjoyed it completely and they were, they were lovely. Oh, so it's Bayzine. I always said Buzzine, but I did too. And then I heard um, someone official say it, and they said Bayzine. So, but it sounds—I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm from the south, so when you put the the long A at the beginning, it's, it brings up my country. Bayzine. So I'm like Buzzine. So, was it your idea to talk about Bayzine, or did they ask you to write about her? No, I mean I I, I got a picture. Okay. Um, I got the picture of her with, with Grumgar in Maz Kanata's castle, which at the time I was like, oh my god, are we back on Mos Eisley? I can work this. Because <laughs> we didn't know what Jakku was yet or anything. Um, so, but you know, I, I had the picture and um, I had a, a couple of key details, but most of it um, I was just asked to write a really kick-ass spy story. So um, it was, there was a lot, of, a lot of fun stuff there and um, a lot of freedom. That's awesome. Um, what kind of I guess, what are you most excited that you got to create and put into the universe? Everything. I mean, it's it's. I'm, I'm a lifelong Star Wars fan, and you know, it's like I've I've got my first Ewok that I got for Christmas the year they came out. Like I've got on my writing desk, I've got like a a Tarfer and and an R2, and like they're there when I write all the time. So the whole thing is just life fulfilling. Um, but I got to come up with um, a couple of planet names that are like now part of canon. These planets exist. I brought them out of nothing. <laughs> And um, I got to explain um, why she wears the cowl. Mm -hmm. That was I came up with that, so I like feel very cool that that happened. And I'm you know if the if the actress ever has to take off the cowl, I'm sorry for what they have to do to her to make that legit. Um, but yeah, and also um, I got to name a character after my my husband's high school Star Wars RPG character. So That's I was awesome. like I'm just going to slide this in, and That's so now his character from when we used to do the RPG in like 1999 or whatever is is canon. That's very cool. Um, yeah, I feel like Perfect Weapon was kind of the first in a tradition that was from Legends where the, like the Tales from Mos Eisley Cantina, Tales from Jabba's Palace, all of these like background characters got these nice rich backstories. I feel like this was the first time that we got that in the canon. So I was really excited That's that they were keeping that. That's what I was going for. Like, I, I wanted to write something that everybody would like. You know, I didn't I didn't want to like break new ground or anything like that, but I just wanted something that people would, would feel at home at. That would have the shorthand that we love and appreciate and feel like you were re-immersed in a world that you loved. 
but maybe had some new details. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know, and I, I've bugged you on Twitter a couple times, I know you can't tell me what's in the box, but uh, like my whole, the video was about my theory on what's in the box, but I am curious, do you know what's in the box? Can, do you know if I'm right or wrong? All I can ever say is that I'm fairly certain it's Gwyneth Paltrow's head. Okay. That's what, that, like, and that's my party line, I'm stanking by it. Okay. Um, was there... I'd like, I know you can't just give away secrets, but I, I am curious just how many things that you do know that you can't tell us. Like, is it, is it hard to keep it bottled up or? Um, it's, I mean, it's, I don't know. I'm like anybody else. Like, I don't want to know too many spoilers. Mm -hmm. Like when I went into The Force Awakens, I wanted to be, I wanted to feel the magic and be in that world. Like I didn't want to be like, oh, I know it's going to happen now. I wanted to be like, holy crap, where are we? Um, so I, I try not to, to learn too much, but you know, it's like um, for, for Scorched that was in Star Wars 165, I got to read Bloodlines early. Mm. And it was so exciting to be like, oh my God, you guys are, do you know what's going to happen? You guys are going to see this. So that was really exciting. But I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I we're not allowed to talk about what we know that we don't know, and what we do know is, is in pe it's like the, the three blind men who find the elephant, and one touches the trunk and thinks right. it's one thing, and one touches the side, and one touches the tail. Like, we only get bits and pieces, and then Star Wars authors get together at the bar, and we're like, oh my god. <laughs> um, do you have any, like, inspirations from the old Legends continuity? continuity? I mean, I, you know, I, I, I had things that I read and loved. I, I always loved the Mandalorians. Like, I really dig their kind of independent spirit and their creativity. Um, so it was fun to do Bazine because she was that same kind of, you know, mercenary. And it was kind of like Boba Fett where, like, he came in for five seconds and stole everything. And, like, now we love him. So I'm really hoping that Bazine will have that chance, too, and that we can see more of where she goes. Are there any more plans to write some more Star Wars for you? Star Wars comes to you, you don't come to Star Wars, but they, they know I'm interested and they know that, um, you know, I'm easy and fast and reliable, so I really hope so, because it was, it was, it's a great experience and I love it. If there were a character, a background character, someone that you could write a short story for, is there anyone that you specifically want? Um, I feel like Star Wars really gets me, so like the two characters they brought me so far have been, you know, smart, independent women having adventures, which I love, so I'm always up for that. I love Sabine Wren. I would really love to, to get to write her. Um, I love Hera, you know, I'll, but anyone they brought to me, um, uh, Captain Phasma, I'd love to write some with her, but there's so many little characters that really obsessed us that we haven't seen their whole world behind them, so I'd, I'd love that, but at the same time, like, I got to write Han Solo, so the, the old character is very nice too, but... I guess we know what happened with that. <laughs> so yeah, uh, let's talk about Scorched a little bit. What's it like to write, is it any different writing like a tie-in story with the novel? Um, you know, it's, I guess with, uh, with The Perfect Weapon, they wanted 10,000 words and I delivered 15,000 and we were all pretty happy with it. With Scorched, I couldn't go a word over 3,000. And so it was very, um, but basically I overwrote it by 1,000 words and said, what do you want me to cut? And we had to whittle it down like a block of cheese. Um, I, I, would, I could have written a whole book on it. It was so nice. Um, but it was fun because um, I knew some stuff about Bloodlines that people didn't know, but just to get Greer's feel and, and her, her sass. So, yeah, it was, it, was, it was super fun, and it was, it was neat to have a window on some things that we had seen in The Force Awakens and like didn't quite know what was occurring. Yeah. I, I, th I feel like the story group's doing a really great job of keeping all the different media connected and cohesive. I'm really... Uh, like some people were upset about the whole legends being wiped away but it doesn't really bother me because <laughs> I like how cohesive it's feeling well, you know, okay so Tim Zahn yesterday said something that I thought was really brilliant which he said that um, it can help if you think about uh, legends versus canon right now as uh, like the library of Alexandria where it burned and so we have these things where we're like was this true or was it not we don't necessarily know um, and so we'll you, you can believe whatever you want and say maybe these things did happen maybe they didn't but until somebody comes out and tells you you know maybe it's changed so you know it's like you throw a moon at, at Chewbacca and he's gone well you know somehow he escaped that apparently and that's that's cool so there's ways to futz with your brain so it doesn't feel like you've lost something that you dearly loved but that maybe you heard a different legend from someone who was playing telephone with it over the years um I think I'm just about done but I'd be curious just to hear kind of your history with Star Wars and how you came to love the universe uh, okay so don't don't hate me for this um when, when I was um, a kid, we saw that, like, I, you know, I'd seen, um, back then you couldn't just go out and rent or buy a movie. Like, Star Wars, you didn't see it unless it came on TV, and then you had to, you know, watch the commercials in between. So I'd seen the movies, and, it, and you know, I was into it. But then when the Escape from Endor 
came on. Like that was the first thing I was like, I got to stay up past nine o'clock and watch it. And we had like microwave popcorn and clear, you know, crystal Pepsi or whatever. Like it was just the most like late 80, mid, mid to late 80s thing. But it was like, because the, the heroine was a little girl. For me, like that was my, my kind of my real bridge that attracted me. Cause it's like this little girl and, and the, the the Ewoks because like they were cute, but they were fierce, which is how I felt as a kid. So like that was my, my gateway. So like I had my Nisa and my Nippet and my Paplu and like I carried them everywhere. And uh, then as I got older and got more into it, um, I connected with, with more and more characters and more and more worlds and became, you know, part of that where it's, it's, it's like history to me. Like, it's not like Star Wars is this series of books that I open and then close. Like, it's history. It really happened. Um, and, you know, I was there, like, I saw um, when Phantom Menace came out, it was the day of my uh, wedding rehearsal. We were late to the wedding rehearsal because we saw the very first showing in, you know, Pendleton, South Carolina. And we're like at the end and we're like getting, you know, back then your phone calls a flip phone and it's buzzing. We're like, hold the stake, hold the stake. We'll be there. (laughs) We're going to get married. We just have to see this movie. Uh, So it's been really fun. And then, you know, The Force Awakens, like we have kids now. And so we gave them coffee so that they would stay awake. And we took them to the midnight showing. Like that was there. We all had our shirts and we all had our lightsabers. And like it was great. So it's, it's been really neat to be along for the whole journey. I don't think there's anyone that can be upset about you falling in love with the Ewoks first. I, I, I'm i impressed that you know like some of their names. Like that, That's that's always cool. I've got a low gray on my desk too. I always liked low gray. Yeah. And Tebow. I love Tebow. So yeah, it's, they're for real. Is there anything coming out that you want to plug, talk about, let everyone know? Anything else that Star Wars fans would be interested to read from you? Uh, well, from what I understand, The Perfect Weapon will be at the end of The Force Awakens paperback uh, this September. It should be in the back of that, so like I'll have something that I can sign and that if you're not an ebook person, you can read it. Um, I've heard the audio is, is very good. I have trouble listening to my words because I only hear the mistakes, so I don't do the audio, but I've heard it's nice. I did listen to the, like, the, the Star Wars music, and then my name was said after it, and I was like, okay, we're done. Yeah. Um, but I also um, I write fantasy. Um, I have a series right now with Orbit. It's, uh, it's called the Shadow Series. The first book is Wake of Vultures. It's by a pseudonym, so it's Lila Bowen. Um, but that book has gotten some play. It got uh, starred reviews from Kirkus, Publishers Weekly, School Library Journal. Um, it's coming out in paperback uh, next week. And then the sequel to it, Conspiracy of Ravens, is out in October. And then there's two more books in that series. So that's, that's what I'm doing until I wait for my next call from Star Wars. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Um, I had a blast. Um, My website is whimsydark.com, W-H-I-M-S-Y dark.com. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, but if you ever have a question for me about, like, I can't answer certain Star Wars questions, but, like, I'm very available on Twitter. I do a lot of, like, tweeting about writing or getting into publishing and stuff like that, so I'm always there for you and glad to talk. Yeah, she won't tell you what's in the box. I've asked, like, three times, but... Send cupcakes, maybe, you know? Well, thank you. I hope you have a good rest of the con. Thank you so much. You too. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you.